Hello friends, I'm Larry with Rides Done Right, and this is the Portland Roadster Show. This car was already built by Strictly Street Rods. He got wiped out in the four weeks. <laughs> Good day everyone, this is Greg from Rise Done Right and we're here at the Portland Roaster Show. And here we have Tommy Carr, a builder, and yeah. he's made this beautiful 36 Ford Coupe. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And, uh, but you're not from here, where are you from? No, we're from a little town called Gold Hill, Oregon. We're in between uh, Medford and Grants Pass. Okay, and then so you drove up, you, you're here quite a few years. I've seen you a number of times. Yeah, we, we come, we really like this venue and uh, it's always fun. We get to see new people and make new friends and that's what's the good part. That's how I found you, that's yeah, how we got that's friends, right. yeah. That's right. So tell us about this 36 Ford, what, what, tell us about that. It's a, it's a beautiful car, yeah. slammed down, it's all tucked, all the wheels are tucked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, it started a project about 12 years ago, and uh, I built it for a client uh, named Herb Sutton, and we uh, probably have in total maybe done about seven or eight cars for him. This one we started, and uh, we got pretty far along, but it was a long process. We were probably into it for um, probably a, a couple of years, and uh, we were building a roadster for him also in the shop, and he decided he wanted to put it away and not work on it for a little while. So about a year ago, uh, we got it out and uh, we wanted to finish it up and he was up for it. So uh, we finished it. Oh, okay. So it's kind of a 12 year slash one year. Mm -hmm. oh, a, a year ago, what, what kind yeah. of state was it in? Uh, we had it, uh, what I thought was final primer. Uh, but as I started to block it and go over it, uh, it wasn't as good as I remembered. And so we uh, did uh, some... Uh, checking gaps and body things and okay. uh, and it wasn't running and uh, so wiring all that sort of stuff and okay but yeah. most of the body components and and things were all put together okay. yeah, yeah we yeah. pretty much had it looking like how we wanted and yeah. what was interesting is uh, after we started like 12 years ago and and it set for probably uh, I don't know six or seven years and then when you get it back, it was like some of the things I second-guessed myself, I was, uh, the moldings that are on the side yeah. uh, are pretty dramatic. And I was like, uh, but when I put them back on the car, I really went, oh, no, that was good. I like oh, okay. that. All right. I, you know, when you, when you have a long project, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you do that, right? Yeah. You do something early on, and then over time, you sort of, your taste change or you have different ideas, mm -hmm. and then you start... Yeah, second guessing yourself. Oh, that's a, that's a completely right, you know. <laughs> and uh, most of the time, it's for the better. <laughs> it's uh, um, this car. The, the the whole vision in my mind for the car, though, from the get go, was I wanted to make uh, like a '50s custom. You okay. know, I already envisioned it with white and uh, uh, the white uh, interior and the green on the body. And the white walls on the side. Yeah, and, and the those being really slammed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and the 40 headlights, and yeah. and it, it's got a lot of 40 stuff. I, I started thinking I should make up a story about how it, but this was a prototype in 36 where they invented <laughs> all the 40 parts, you know? Everybody needs a story now, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> so your inspiration was an old old style hot rods uh, custom uh, that, that you, you kind of took a lot of the styling cues. What, what, what are some of the twists? What are some of the things that you put into it? Well... I envision it as a custom, but I'm not normally a custom car. You know, my, my, my thing was more street rods for most of the time. And we did a few muscle cars and we did some late model cars, but um, mostly it was street rods. So for me, I wasn't, uh, I had a feeling for what the customs were because I grew up around that. Sure, yeah. uh, but um, I, did, I wasn't really so strongly influenced by it. In other words, I mean, a custom is slammed, it's got skirts usually, and it's uh, uh, chopped to top, and yeah. so those general things were in there. I think the uh, moldings on the side and the moldings on the running boards were kind of unique that I hadn't seen done before. Uh, all cars, we all see a car and then we're influenced by 
those cars yes. in our memory as kids oh, or yeah. whatever, you know. Uh, my first car I drove was a 57 Ford wagon yeah. with a 390 and a four speed and, and uh, memories of drive-ins, you yeah. know, yeah. and uh, that sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, every uh, all, we get influenced by other cars, you know. Oh, absolutely. As, uh, you, yeah. And as n number of shows that you go to and all the cars that you see, all those affect what you do next, right? I, yeah, I think so. We want to try and come up with something that's new. And then, uh, and the other real key is to have features on the car that are not stuff that we buy from Summit, yeah. you know, and yeah. just put it on. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're, those are good things, and it's not that we don't, right. but we always want to have something that's just us, Indeed. that we made it and we yep. thought of it, and it, yeah. it, we woke up in the middle of the night going, oh, I could do that, <laughs> you know? Or you I wake have, up. I have too many of those when I was building mine, I know. <laughs> or you wake up in the middle of the night and go, uh oh, that won't work. <laughs> yeah, lots of, lots of times of that. Yeah. So, what's one of the most challenging parts of this car that you uh, remember? Um, I, don't, I don't know that, to be honest with you, that there was anything that was real, like, challenging that I didn't think that we could do in this car. Pro mostly because it's a custom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little simpler of a car. If you start doing too high-tech of stuff, it kind of ruins the car a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, some of these cars that are so tricked out, Steve's and, and the beautiful car that Aaron and those guys built, they lend themselves to that because that's a that's a real high tech kind of street rod, yeah. you know. And not that I mean everything's pretty underneath our car. Don't get me wrong. We yeah. we paid attention to detail, but I didn't want independent rear end. I didn't I didn't want some of the stuff that yeah. in other cars we've done that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is just a it's a real old school type of custom that yeah. and you yeah. just kind of. Yeah. But took the, all the right pieces and, uh -huh. and put them on. So yeah, we uh, in uh, we added five inches to the front fenders so oh. that they would go all the way to the ground. Okay, well and that's, that, that's a bit of work. Yeah, and the because in the rear, the, uh, the 36 naturally go, flows goes to the you know it's not that all the bumpers are lowered three inches yeah. and then the filler panels and that and when I got to the front. It didn't do that in yeah. a 36. The fender kind of curves up. Right. So that's why we added that to make it look and yeah. match balance, the back. Balance yeah. the front and the back and together. Yeah. Because it's so low, the exhaust going out the back, it couldn't be underneath anything because oh, the true. bumper is just right on the ground. Right. So we uh, cut holes in the bumper and then we made our own exhaust tips and we. Uh, um, uh, CNC some Ford emblems and we welded them into the tailpipe. That's a nice touch. All it those kind nice. of little yeah. things. Yeah, you know? those are nice so, touches. Yeah, the, we have a serious radio antenna that uh, that is almost obsolete now. Uh -huh. the electronics change so fast, they do. Yeah. you know, that you'll get uh, something that I bought 12 years ago. We had a, a disc changer for it. And that, it's like my stereo people were like going, this is a dinosaur, man. You can't put that in there. Better than an eight track. I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> eight track might have been better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what's the interior? What, what do you have in there? Okay, the interior is a glide seat. It's a split back with a bench because there again, I didn't want buckets. You know, I want to keep that kind of look. But my client really liked the bucket seats. We were back and forth. So I went ahead and did the split back with the armrest inside. The dash is a 1940 dash. But we put in big Stuart Warner, two big Stuart Warner gauges because yeah. why not kind of keep the old school? Yeah. Has the really neat Stuart Warner little yeah. logo, yeah. and then we hooded him, which just means you know we put a uh, we okay. molded in a top o over the top, right. and uh, filled in everything else on the dash. Simple things, low car shifter, the big tall one, so yeah. it you know looks old, yeah. and uh, a little floor, small floor console. Uh, Mostly because I needed some place to put the air ride uh, uh, deal, and then uh, we still did an over over the top console for the radio. Yeah. That's not really like, but we made it real swoopy and kind of uh, so it still fit the car. Okay. And then on the uh, around the windshield, most people don't get this. Is a 36 is an old rollout type windshield. And there's yeah. a knob on the dash, oh, so and they yeah they preventing? rolled yeah they rolled out you know. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want, I, I really just didn't want that because I didn't want that in the dash. So what we did is we used the stock frame, chromed it and chopped yeah. it, and then we glued it in. Okay. And then uh, because I did that, 
it made me have to change all of the opening around on the inside. So uh, so we, we sheet metaled all that and made it curve and, and made it fit the console. And, and it, it's strange, but it, it really added a lot to the interior. So you made it sound like there wasn't much that you did uh, when we were just, you know, oh. or a few minutes ago. And now you start talking about oh. all the sheet metal, all the things that you did. You actually did quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there really is a lot of changes to the car. Yeah. I, I just think I, I was maybe more like point, pointing to uh, chassis and suspension. It's a TCI chassis. Okay. And maybe some of that detail. It's not like an LS motor. Uh, mm -hmm. We intentionally, we didn't even put a really... Uh, uh, built motor or anything in it. It's just a nice uh, 383 stroke motor and uh, tri power because I wanted that old look, you yeah. know? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but no, there's a ton of work in the car. Oh, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You probably know at being the builder exactly how many hours that is but I, we don't yeah. we don't, we don't have to say here <laughs> it was weird because it was split up that such a long period yeah. of not working on it yeah. but yeah there's major time so in 12 it. years ago when your labor was uh you know fifty dollars an hour <laughs> now it's uh, what 150 dollars that what it is <laughs> it's actually fifty dollars an hour still oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it always seems like it's too much you know i hate that i hate the part of i hate the whole finances of the deal yeah I most wish builders. I I wish I just had a bunch of money and I could just build cars for free for people. Most, most uh, you know builders are they don't want to get their hands on the you know, sheet metal and weld and do all that stuff. They hate the books. That is right. That is right. <laughs> we we keep real close track though, and every day my uh, whoever's working on it logs in what they did. Cause, and I tell my guys, I said, hey, these guys are spending a lot of money, and yeah. you know it's important for us. You treat it like you're the client now. Yeah. And you take care of those, and we're going to write. I don't care what you write down, and you know, be fair and give a good description, because that's important. And and my and our yeah. people, you know, look it yeah. over, and they they sometimes they call them. Well, why this? And I, and I explain it to them, and yeah. you know, and they're they're real. I work, I just work for tremendous people. I really do. And uh, the one thing that I really like to have on camera is that I get to build a dream. You know, and I'm strongly influenced. I always tell my client that, hey, it's your job, it's your car. Yeah. But you're hiring me because you like what I've done on other cars. Right. So I'm going to give you my opinions of what we need to do, and I'm going to give you suggestions. And But we share the dream. Yeah. And I can never afford to do one of these cars. Yeah. You know, so uh, all the guys that I work for have all guys that have usually been pretty successful in what they do. And uh, uh, and they're generous, and they're just I have very few uh, complaints with working for anybody. Well, as as a car owner, mm -hmm. I can say that uh, when when we're looking for builders, it's it's the skill set, but and 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 the honesty, but it's the, it's the it's the personalities. You yeah. have to because yeah. when you're in a in a project, when I was 13 years, not all they're they're not all that long, but yeah, it's like you, you, you know you're going to be. Oh, you know, married. You know, yeah. you're, it's like you, yeah, you have to choose. Very, yeah, it's a relationship, right? And uh, and if so. there is no trust, just forget the whole thing. Yeah, if you absolutely. if you question me, and there's not a there, you know, you might not like that something is expensive or whatever else, and I can understand that, but I can never understand somebody not trusting me. If there's yeah. no trust, yeah. then the car could go yeah, away. You know, because, both and both too. ways. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. You have to trust them; they have to trust you. Exactly. You not only just you not only did the uh, the the build of the car, but you're also the painter as well, right? So you do everything. Yeah, um, I'll have to back up on that though. I hired a new uh, a painter this year. Oh, you did. And uh, so he's doing lots of painting for me and taking some of that pressure off. I'm always involved in the artwork, though. I pretty much do but that. But you, you you've painted but for I painted decades for today, right? Forty-two years. Yeah. Yeah. So, you so you're a paint guy so, anyway. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm there to make sure everything's the way that I want it. My guys understand that so if they, on, yeah. So on this car, the the paint is what? What's this paint here? Okay, uh, it's uh, R and M and uh, some House of Colors. Uh, R and M uh, is usually we'll use that in our base coats and things like that. And uh, I use a lot of House of Color pearls and candies and. The uh, white base on this car is Wimbledon white, an old standard Ford color, yeah. uh, but loaded up with green pearl. Okay. And uh, the bottom is uh, 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 planet green, 
and it has lime uh, gold yeah. candy on top. Yeah. So, so it pops it even more, look. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you went, for as a custom, you went with uh, some bright, bright colors versus mm -hmm. the the suede or the darker colors. So oh, yeah. Is that, was a, is that your decision or the uh, owner's, or how'd you come up with those colors? The client that I did this car with, actually, he never tells me even what color to paint, usually. He's oh. just like, hey, Tommy, you know better than I, and I'll kind of go, well, what color are you thinking of? You know, and he might say blue or green or whatever, you know, and, and I go, okay, I can work with that, you know. And we do, uh, we do spray panels uh, for our clients. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, then we can kind of, we might do four or five different colors and arrangements and, and I'll block off maybe some different pearls effects and, cause there's no, you can't look at a chip, you know, in these yeah. kind of colors as you yeah. will know. Yeah. So the big panels are, yeah. yeah. And get them out in the sunlight and yeah. yeah. You want to see one? <laughs> some, yeah. Okay. Soon. Not right okay. now. All right. Yeah, I saw you have, you <laughs> yeah. have them in your booth. I brought I saw a couple. Yeah. yeah. I saw that. <laughs> okay. And they're even curved so you get yeah. the different effects. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's cool. So you have, a, you have also a couple of cars here uh, besides this one. Mm -hmm. You have a, a 37 Ford. Yes, a Cabriolet. Uh, Cabriolet. Mm -hmm. And you have a DeSoto. Yeah. I'm not sure what year 30, that is. 34. 34. So these are just some more examples of, of your work that uh -huh. really nice. Thank so you. are they also ground up or, uh, uh, you know? Well, both of these other ones are interesting because uh, the 37, uh, we built a, a 50. Ford, that uh, really, really beautiful car. I, I might even be one of my favorites. Uh, but uh, and it's kind of a little bit custom. I, I think it leaned me a little bit more, right. you know. But uh, it. Um, uh, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> You're on the way. Oh, the, yeah. He had. He also has this 37, and the 37 just got a little old and tired. He bought it at Pleasanton, and so uh, we uh, decided we were going to. Uh, do some paintwork just on the outside and uh, freshen up the upholstery. Well, when we tore it down, it needed, you know, it needed more One and of more. Those. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, so we uh, we did we didn't paint underneath the chassis. It's Jaguar and Mustang too, and it, the chassis was was nice. And uh, so I tried to use the color so that we didn't get too far away from the color. Yeah. And we made a belly pan for underneath the car just because the uh, the yeah. the well you know the suspension it was a little yeah. bit old you know okay. so so we made a belly pan for it and uh Jeez. and then redid the interior we put a 57 four dash inside and okay. a console and uh, actually the inside's really it's really pretty with the top off but it's nice with the top on too so it's a lift off and that desoto is just, you don't see those very far yeah, yeah the desoto uh i did not know butch when they started it and he was working with another guy that wasn't really a professional builder but pretty talented guy he had really good ideas but he really wasn't very good with body work and uh, and they wanted me to come paint it and I said I don't really do that you yeah, know unless yeah. we can start on metal you yeah, know yeah but they had already had so much done and by the time we just kept through the process we got to be pretty good friends and I was yeah we'll do it so yeah. but we had to take all the seams and grind them out and because they just stitch welded it instead oh, okay. of you know welding it properly yeah. so yeah. so we redid the bodywork and the paint but uh, Butch and his partner uh, had some great design ideas and they made a really cool grill what about the show what this, oh, I know I've seen you here a number of times at the show. What do you think of the show? Yeah, man, I, we get treated so good by Dwayne and his crew, and and we just love coming here, and uh, especially the camaraderie with all the guys, the people building their cars. Uh, that's really really great, you know. And there's so many just wonderful guys here, and and gals, you know, gals are better looking than the guys naturally, <laughs> but you know, that's. So it's not it's not really builders, uh, you know. It, you're, you're competing, but there's also this camaraderie, right? Oh At yeah. Least, is there? Yeah, I feel that way, you know. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of guys that do. There are some guys are pretty competitive about it, and uh, but it's all it's all okay, you know. And uh, and then there's a lot of guys here that you know they're not they're not building cars to make a living. They're doing it because they enjoy it and have fun. Yeah. I enjoy it and have a ball. 
uh, but I happen to get paid for it. That's, to get, you know. well, that's one of the best jobs you can get. If you like what you're doing, you get paid. That's the best. It, it really is, that's yeah, it. for sure. Uh, but uh, it's really fun to talk to guys that are uh, that want to get more information, and I've been doing it a long time, so I can share with them some of that information, and some of those guys that are maybe first time building a car, can I can see something neat that they do. and. And I got no problem with copying some stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of the norm. Everybody does that, right? Well, yeah, yeah. And that's a real flattery to come here and maybe see something that we uh, created on one of our cars and see somebody that thought it was neat enough to want to do it in their car, you know? So that's good. So you were talking about, yeah, so you do something in your booth that I've not seen anybody else do. It's, it's really cool. You have this basically instructional uh, how to tape uh, flames on a on a you know, the fender kind of thing, and yeah. you're showing the kids. That's that's yeah. so cool to kids. Yeah, uh, foster the the children. You know, the younger generation. To, it, this yeah. is how you do that. It, it I just love people. So uh, anything that I can do to kind of interact, it makes it more fun. Makes the day go by too. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and it, flames are the easiest thing to do. I can't pull my gun out here and start spraying. You know. So uh, yeah, we and then we can talk about it. I was even thinking about talking to Dwayne maybe next year and and maybe do a couple of sessions where I can talk about oh, stuff for the Weekend Warrior, how to mix paint, oh, uh, you know, yeah, some maybe thing kind of like thing, that. Yeah, yeah I, I think I might Kind of like Home him. Depot does, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> I'll get the apron, I'll do the whole thing, you know. <laughs> maybe uh, do it more like, uh, what's that, Lady Cook, Childs, or whatever, <laughs> Julia Childs, there you go, Childs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cook something up, huh? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So, Tommy, this has been a pleasure. I sure appreciate you Thank taking you. the time, and good luck, and Thank have you. fun with you. I know oh, you have yeah. fun. So. I can't, you know me. I, got, I have fun wherever I go. You do. Huh? And uh, I want to. we're going to be anxious to see you in Medford, my friend. I look forward to it. Yeah. That'll be a lot yeah. of fun. Oh, yeah. We'll have a good time. Yeah. Well, All thank right. you, Tommy. You bet, man. All right. <laughs> All righty. All right. Thanks, folks, and we'll see you next time. All right. <laughs>